Now, India's launch of a South Asia satellite has enormous strategic significance. It brings India closer to its neighbors, but it also demonstrates India's mastery over a range of space technologies. Leave it to China's Global Times paper to put perspective on India's South Asian satellite in a report. Leave it to China's Global Times newspaper to put a perspective on India's South Asia satellite. In a report, it said, the effort that the Modi administration has made in providing satellite services to South Asian countries is worth praising. But China should not be excluded from New Delhi's recent moves to strengthen space cooperation with neighbours. China's space record may seem odd. It has an orbiting space station, it launched a robo-cargo ship earlier this year and is planning a manned space flight soon. But India's successful mission to Mars in 2014, Mangalyaan suggested mastery over certain technologies which China may lack, witness the failure of its own 2011 Mars mission. Then spacecraft control technologies can be applied to ballistic missile guidance systems. India is already ahead in satellite launch business. More than that, it marks another step forward for India's space program. India already has two military satellites and one naval satellite in orbit. It has developed a powerful S-band antenna and is moving towards launching two-ton satellites. The semi-cryogenic engine will propel India into human space missions and space stations in the near future. Clearly, China, while outwardly appreciative of India's space program, also sees a disquieting element of competition shaping up right next door. Bureau report, Vion. Now, this maiden project is not just another space initiative by ISRO, but an example of what many are calling a stratospheric diplomacy being led by India, as India looks to further strengthen cooperation with regional nations in the area of space technology. And by the way of satellite, India aims to create a tangible deliverable when it comes to space technology and research. With seven nations using the same platform for individuals as well as joint transmissions, a move that could help strengthen multilateral flow of information. It's a very happy news that we are getting a gift from India, I mean our neighboring country. As an user, I will always look for a very cheap uh, uh, rate of call for uh, communication, overseas communication, especially among the third countries. I mean, at the moment, the charges are significantly high. And uh, I hope that oh, after the launching of this satellite, we will be able to get a cheaper communication uh, uh, way. So in that respect, we are very happy that uh, this is being launched. All right, earlier we spoke to Andrew Coates of UCL to get some insight into this initiative. We started by discussing what he has to say about this initiative by India. It looks like a good initiative for the region to help with communications problems and um, issues associated with that. So it has a number of transponders on board which are able to, um, to help basically in developing nations which may not have their own space programs to, um, to be able to actually do um, some interesting things and to get, uh, to get basically communications with the rest, the rest of the world. So there are a number of kind of humanitarian benefits. There's also a disaster reduction payload, so something which allows you to revisit areas where disasters have happened. So again, that's something which is useful. And there's a number of remote sensing type of things. Now, there are satellites for this type of thing already, um, so it's not clear exactly how much um, is going to be adding to what's already um, available. But it seems to be an initi initiative specifically so set up to help with them with some of the other countries in the region to sort of be able to use space technology because in the west we use space every day for all sorts of things for positioning for weather forecasting for um, communications um, satellite tv and all, all sorts of things so there are lots of benefits of space um, which we sort of take for granted really um, and and in the west we we have all this technology available but it's not clear that everybody is has access to this so the idea is to try and um, to try and effectively provide that from india almost as a present to the rest of the region you know, normally um, people would have to pay for um, satellites and um, access to that type of technology. Um, I don't know what the financial arrangements are with this, but I assume it's being done kind of um, 
for the good of all mankind. I mean, if, if you think back to the Apollo program, I mean, that was done in principle for the, for the benefit of all mankind and for uh, people, you know, landing on the moon, exploring on the moon, the exploration was being done for all humanity. So, you know, to some extent that, um, uh, that people could buy into that and like that idea. We also discussed with Andrew Coates what could be the political implications of the space program given that Pakistan has pulled out of the project. Politically, it's probably difficult for them to collaborate in such a program, which is, um, which is quite, um, you know, it's Indian-led, um, it's for the region, so it sounds like... Um, you know, it may have some political problems for Pakistan. I don't know very much about the politics of that region, to be honest, but uh, but my impression is that there may be some difficulties um, with Pakistan being involved in it. Um, and um, certainly, th there's, another, there's an interesting organisation associated with the science in that region, the AOGS, which is Asia and Oceanic um, Geophysical Society, and all the countries in the region are associated with that because space science, which I'm involved with, is much more international and much more um, inclusive of everybody. Uh, China also in the region and, and Japan and we're working on um, on space as well. So these types of um, activities are all complementary with each other. In space science, we managed to marry that together, but there are some aspects of um, communication satellites which may be a little sensitive. And that uh, that may be why Pakistan's maybe decided not to join this particular initiative.